If you're looking to share valuable information like data or timelines, but don't want to bore your audience with heaps of copy, infographics can be a powerful visual ally for your business. You can have incredibly valuable information, but if your visuals are non-existent, heavy amounts of data are not going to be interesting. Creating infographics is a visual art form. And let's face it, making data interesting can be a big challenge. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how you can change that. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to figure out which type of infographic to focus on and how to create an infographic on Adobe Spark post. Let's head over to the desktop version of post and we'll get started. There are many types of infographics. The most popular ones we see focus on statistics, timelines, how-tos, process charts, and comparison infographics. The key to making an infographic successful is how we break down complex information into easy to read content. You'll need to be very selective with what the most important information to use is in order for it to be effective. If you aren't sure which one to focus on from these top five, let's quickly break it down. Statistic-driven infographics typically use number data, but you will often find that they use visuals or icons to represent this data. These are great to help break down overwhelming numbers into easy to understand visual content. Timeline infographics are helpful when you're trying to relate historical events in a visual manner. You can also use this in business to break down a timeline process. How-to infographics typically use a combination of illustrations and photos to teach you something. These are broken down into easy to understand steps. Think of this like when you're trying to build some furniture, it's those graphics that you see to help you break down the process. Process chart infographics can be similar to the timeline infographics. Essentially, they break down a process in a step-by-step -step mode that is visual and easy to follow. And comparison infographics, well, they compare something from A to B in a visual form. Now let's get to the exciting part, how to make infographics with Adobe Spark Post. For this tutorial, we're gonna focus on two of the infographic examples I mentioned. There are two ways to get started. You can either look at the inspiration board and search through infographics. You'll have great, great examples that you can remix from, or you can start from scratch. For this example, we're gonna start from scratch. And first up, you see a process chart infographic. If you're a business owner, I think this one will be gold for you. I designed it specifically to help my team have a visual reference of our content process and who is involved in each phase. This has been super helpful. Let's take a look at how to create this infographic. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be working off the desktop mode, so I am going to create a new project. I'm gonna start with a custom size graphic. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a graphic that is 600 pixels wide by 1400 in height. The typical recommended size is around 600 in width. And the reason why is because it fits perfectly in blogs and it's a great size for Pinterest. Let's just get started with getting our basic template done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add some copy. I'm just gonna add some basic generic copy to get started. You don't wanna add it all and I will show you why in just a minute. So I've gone and added my basic copy. I added a headline and just some starter information and I added a number because I want this one to have steps. So I just started with a basic. And then at the bottom here, I added a rectangle icon to create my footer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and add more icons. I'm gonna tap on the icon and I'm actually gonna start looking for brainstorm. This is to help me find some icons to relate to the information of each of these steps. What I recommend is that you first start with outlining the steps that you wanna use before you actually get into the design. So once I find the graphic that I like, I'm just gonna select it and put it on here. Now I'm gonna go in and add some more icons to really start to fill out my information. I'm gonna look for Chevron. So I found my icons and they're all here. I just went ahead and changed some of the colors to speed up the process, but also be able to organize these now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start dragging these so I can start shaping some of my information. 
What I love about using the desktop is that if I need more precise arrangement, I can just use my arrows to be able to arrange the information. And then this little winding arrow that I found, I'm just gonna place it here and you'll see how this works in just a minute. Then this little chevron guy, I'm going to bring up here and I want him to be facing towards the right because I want this to be a directional cue telling people what is next. So we kind of use this as a visual guide to help direct the eye. And then I have this little icon that I'm using that's reflecting to the information here and my number one to just direct the steps. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select on one of these and then I'm gonna select multiple. To select multiple items, on the desktop version, you're just gonna hold the shift key and select each of these items. So that way you can duplicate them. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on this duplicate icon and voila, we have our content. Now I can just go in and arrange this. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to start arranging some of my content, moving this arrow, as you can see now, I'm using that as another directional cue. And then I wanna shift this chevron to face the other way. So that way I can bring my content and it's telling the eye to look towards the left with the information. Once I have this structured, you'll see how this works. I'm just arranging my icon this way and I want my number to be on this side so that I can use the numbers correctly. Now you can see how this arrow is now peeking out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this in here and now we're starting to use this arrow as an interwinding guide in between these steps. Now I've added all the content for each of these steps. I changed my icons and I arranged this little arrow to have more of a directional field. Next, what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna add a nice little icon on the background to create some more texture so I'm gonna actually look for texture and I'm going to look through all the options that I have here to be able to create this nice faded effect that I had. Once it's in here, I'm just gonna make this larger and I'm going to bring this to the back because I don't want this on top of any of my copy. So I reduce the opacity, just adds a little bit of texture which makes it more appealing. Next, what I'm gonna do is to make this effective and really help people see who is doing what, I'm gonna add just a circle icon and I'm gonna color code these for each person that's working in the project and this will help me be able to create these little color coded information that I was showing you earlier. So I'm just gonna start placing this here and the reason why I'm doing this step last is because I wanted to be able to know each of these steps first and then decide who is focusing on what. So now you see the next version, which is where I created each of these individually and I went and reselected them all like I did with the process here. I duplicated them and then I just removed the one that I didn't need for the person involved. So this is really helpful if you have a team or if you need different types of processes, then you can add a little key down here and I just put the initials of our team members and who was focusing on what. And this really helps have a good visual reference in your process and your production timeline. Now, the other example I wanna share with you is a statistic-driven infographic. I know I mentioned earlier that most of them typically use numbers as far as their data goes, but data can also be a lot of language and letters. So this one's more like informational and we're using visuals here to tie into Arctic species that are affected by climate change. So we're not gonna go into the whole process again of how to create this, but I do wanna break this down for you to be able to see how I created this one since it's different. So I created the same structure with my headline, my copy. I have a background image that I found from the free resources we have inside the app. So I just can look for free photos. I search for iceberg. And then I found this one that had a really nice contrasting background, which allowed me then to set up the background to be black or the same color. You can use the eyedropper to match. And now that made the infographic even better. I had my sub copy here just to give an introductory to what I'm trying to relay. And then what I did here is for each of these individual items, I focused on a specific species. So what I did is again, I used my free resources. I found some emperor penguins. And then what I did is, let's say I wanna just change this for the reason being to show you. What I did is I cropped it, but I used the shape crop tool. So this is really helpful because it allows you to break down the content in a more visual manner. As you can see, I changed it to a triangle. 
And then I added some supporting icons to reflect what the information was about and how the emperor of penguins are affected in their breeding. So I use a little egg as a visual reference. These are really great ways for you to restructure your content and not make it so copy heavy that is visually overwhelming for people. So this is a great way to break it down. Now, if you're seeing this little nice water effect here, what I did was I have a background color, but then what I did is I use again my free resources and I replaced an image of water. And then what I did is I went into my opacity and I lowered the opacity. So originally the image was at this rate. So I lowered the opacity so that it becomes more transparent. And what it does is it actually creates a nice little texture that way. And it makes your infographic a lot more interesting and appealing. Infographics are a powerful way to share our information. When done right, they help elevate our content from simple numbers and letters into information we want to learn from. I hope this got you excited and ready to create infographics using Adobe Spark Post. Let us know in the comments below what you thought and what you're going to get creating. This is Nikte Cuevas of Nikte Creative Design, and I will see you in the next Adobe Spark tutorial.